Um, in this lesson, we're going to cover what a precedent is and how they're used in architecture. Um, and tools I have nearby, you're actually going to need a pencil, piece of loose paper um, that aren't in a notebook, and a device that can access the internet. So first, we'll start off with what is a precedent? So what are we even talking about? Um, a precedent is actually an earlier event or action that sets an expected standard and can be used to justify current decisions. The example that I pulled up here is actually the 1954 Brown versus Board of Education, which started the, which set the legal precedent for most of the civil rights movement to come. Um, and it declared unanimously that uh, segregation is an unconstitutional act um, and schools do not, cannot uh, segregate and start a desegregation. Um, the second concept that really talks about precedence and how we can start thinking about precedence um, is how an unrelated object or model can actually serve as an inspiration to an idea or thought in a project at hand. Um, and so here I have the duck building, um, which famously is used for buying and selling ducks back in, 19, in the 1930s. Um, but now it was, and it was modeled after obviously a duck. And so the duck had nothing to do with the actual building other than it has the space um, and it ties in with the whole theme of the building. And so it served as the inspiration for that building. Um, the precedent being the duck, the building being not a duck, but shaped like a duck looking like the duck. This next section will actually be broken up into three different phases of the project. Thematic design, design duck, design development and construction implementation. Um, and so each section will be, will have its own activity paired with it. Um, I'll walk you through how the precedents are used and then um, you'll have a chance to see what I, what some ideas that I put down and then have a chance to actually do it yourself. So here we go. Architectural precedents, schematic design. So here's some ideas about what schematic, how, how architects might be inspired by um, concepts. And so in this, in this example, we have Santiago Calachapa's building, the Turning Corso, where it is well documented that he is actually cited for um, drawing inspiration from the human spine. And you can even start to see it, the way that the structure is made, it's actually really segmented. Um, it almost feels more like each, each piece is a piece of the human spine, and it's twisting like this drawing um, that he's actually done to the side here. And so um, really, he drew inspiration from the human body. The next possible way that an architect may use uh, precedent um, during schematic design is actually um, really referencing previous projects or similar projects, um, projects of similar size and scale to justify, hey, we can actually do this, we've seen this before, um, or we think we can do it better. Um, and so here's SOM's Cayenne Tower. Um, and this Cayenne Tower is actually very similar. You know, you have the spinning form, um, but there are striking differences where um, the Cayenne Tower actually reads more of a twisting volume rather than uh, Santiago Calatrava's segmented spine look. And so you can start to create precedent. Um, while SOM never formally says we drew inspiration from that project, um, you know, they look very similar. It's, it's hard to say that one is not the other, or one is not um, speaking to one another. Um, and then the third possible way that architects use um, precedent during schematic design is actually the contextual precedent, where um, the Moss Architects does this really well um, in the uh, uh, Carnegie Residence based in Lawrenceville. Um, I really like, I think that what they did here with the rear porch um, was a very contextual approach um, relating to the two um, protruding spaces um, to, on its neighbors. The balcony actually protrudes out and then you set back the building. They didn't have to do it that way, they could have made it that, a different option. Um, and I think this gives it a relationship to the neighboring, um, to the neighboring projects. Out front, um, the front porch railing doesn't actually intrude too much on the street. Um, it doesn't distract from the way that the building is situated. Um, and as a result of that, you might have the material, um, the scale, and the style, or the rhythm all relating back to nearby buildings. Um, so here we have the style. Um, we kind of just switched it up a little bit. Um, this style isn't taken away. We see similar color palettes from back. Um, and so it's really relating back to uh, nearby buildings. But a lot of 
plays about living in Pittsburgh and life in Pittsburgh. Um, and he actually grew up right here in the Hill District um, in this home that you see in front of us. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing analyses like this, where we actually go through specific components. Um, you might be able to uh, find alignments, or you might be starting to categorize the building by areas. Um, and so in the next slide, what you're going to do is you're going to take your own, your own attempt um, at creating these different analysis diagrams um, and trying to understand and break down the building into whether it be detail supports and openings, or you create alignments between different uh, building uh, components. Um, what I did was actually align the center, center line with windows, um, and then also the horizontal elements is talk about how it might extend out further. Um, and then the final uh, diagram actually starts to look at different areas, whether it be the cap, the center, or the ground, and how they relate to one another in terms of forms, uh, form, size, and shape. And so here, what I want you to do is I actually want you to pause the video um, and do your own diagram over that with a piece of paper. So you can pause in three, two, one, pause. All right, I'm gonna assume you've unpaused now. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, and then we're gonna move into the next, into the next slide here. So two, how are, how are precedents used um, during the design development? Phase. And so the design development phase, we've got a simple building schematic. We have an idea down, um, and we're going to start looking at materials. Um, this, uh, what we're going to look at first is actually how design can actually remind us of familiar places through pattern, rhythm, and form. Um, and here I'm using the example by Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright called Falling Water. It's a very famous building um, here in Pittsburgh. Uh, it's probably an hour out of Pittsburgh. Um, and what it's referencing is actually the natural waterfall that actually is sited on top of. Um, you can see from the material, it starts to, rem it's reminiscent of the stone. Here I pulled a, a waterfall from the, um, Logan Falls, the Allegheny National Forest. And so what you can start to look at is the way that the water cascades. You see the rocks cascading down. Um, there's a lot of similarity and connection between the two. And so familiar places pattern that we form can start to remind us of that. Um, here, what I'm calling to your attention is actually the Carnegie Museum Bart Sculpture Hall, where Andrew Carnegie decided that it was really great for artists to be studying the great classics from around the world. Um, and the way that he did that was he created plaster casts and brought them to Pittsburgh, creating the Sculpture Hall. Um, the, it sets a precedent for many, many artists to study the classic, classic form and proportion. Um, and so we start to look at these in space um, and think about how does that actually create meaning? How does that actually, what, are, who, who, what artists are you elevating to the top? Um, and so it can become a point of conversation, but it also can remind us of the various spaces around the world. Um, and then finally, we can talk about how materials really tell stories, how they can invoke emotions and set the tone of spaces. What we have here is the Butaro District Hospital by Mass Design Group in Rwanda, um, where they actually worked with local residents um, to create local jobs by using volcanic rock nearby and actually stacking it in a very labor-intensive way to create those jobs, um, while also giving a very iconic sense to the space, both inside and outside. Um, and so learning from all of that, we're going to start part two of our activity, refining the materials. So for refining the materials, what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at um, creating our own version of this. And so what I've given you um, is actually just the box, and you'll see that on the next slide. Um, and you're going to draw from inspiration that we've already seen. You don't have to pull the things that I want. You aren't limited to drawing within the box. You can draw on half the box. Um, but it's just a basis to start with. And so what I pulled in here, I looked at the windows, and I really like the way that these windows had emollient grid, um, and so I pulled that over and started to play with that. I really like the way that these have a sill that create a horizontal element. Um, I like the way that there's a storefront, and this actually, in my mind, is actually protruding out, um, creating a front porch condition like right here. And if you remember, this whole patterning is actually very similar to what we saw out front. And so here I want you to take a look at 
your own option. And so in three, two, one, you're gonna pause. And then now I'm assuming that you're gonna unpause um, and we're gonna move on into the next section where we talk about how precedents are used in the construction documentation phase, where actually construction documentation, much of it is precedent based. We base a lot of the documentation set on previous standards that we've established in the profession. The first one being building information covering kind of general accessibility and maybe codes. The second one, the second section A1 or A100s um, often covers just floor plans and maybe sometimes ceiling plans. Um, and the second and third are typically elevations and sections. And so this creates a uniform platform for people in the building industry to actually read um, any set. They have a general sense of what's going to happen. Other things that might go in the set are wall sections and large blends, details, uh, maybe sometimes product tables, which is call out different um, products and three images, depending on the architect. The second section here um, is actually looking at uh, how construction documentation we use construction detailing, um, and really the core is that every single building is learning from each other um, and talking to one another about how it can be a better performing building. Um, and so we start to take a look at that. We see two different sections from two different walls that are similar. They both have insulation in them. They both have a sheeting, which is really just a wood board, um, and they both might use brick. And so those bricks are being held by some kind of anchor piece um, or angle rather. And so here you can see that angle there. This is honed over time and it starts to build on top of one another. Um, it's not just a one time. I made a detail. Um, even here, there are simple changes. What we're going to look at is actually the stairs. In the next section, I'll actually show you some maybe a really first pass at what I thought maybe a cool stair would be. Um, but here we have the key ideas are what's going to hold up the stair? What's actually gonna, what's this stair gonna feel like? Is it gonna feel like you're walking on nothing? Or is it gonna feel like you're walking on solid ground? Are you gonna be walking on water? Um, or are you gonna actually be able to see through each step to look at what's underneath so there's a relationship between? These are all ideas as, you're, as you are designing your stairs, you can actually think about this. Um, and so here, I have my first pass at designing a stair. Um, I started thinking about, well, if there's an angle created, how does that angle create, um, relate to one another? I was really interested in creating each step being its own. So in my head, the blue vertical lines might actually be a folded plate um, coming down. And so you can start thinking about this and just drawing, um, imagining, is there water coming down? Is there, um, is it actually on fire? Are people gonna have to walk up uh, a steel stair, are they expected to walk up wood stairs? All of these come into play as you're looking at precedence and drawing that inspiration. Um, and so here, what I'm gonna ask you to do again is pause three, two, one. All right, so I'm guessing you've paused and now you're unpaused, you can hear my voice. Um, and so I look forward to seeing all of your stairs um, please take photos of them. Please share them on Instagram with a hashtag project pipeline. Um, and then, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this lesson. I hope you found it interesting and challenging. Um, and thank you for participating in this year's project pipeline. Have a great day, everybody.